Okay, so in this video, we will be looking at how to convert your multifaster file into a phylogeny and then how to view your phylogenetic tree in MicroReact. So if you can recall that we previously received FASTQ data from the lab, we did the sequencing, that was then through a series of tools converted to a consensus FASTQ file. And those FASTQ files can be used in applications such as Pangolin, NextTrain, NextClade, for example. Um, but we are going to be looking at how to build your own phylogenetic tree as opposed to in Pangolin and NextClade, for example, where you just add your FASTQ file and you try and see where your sample fits in against other samples across the world. You're going to look at now how your samples compare to the SARS-CoV-2 reference strain. So whether you've used the SARS-CoV-2 workbench at Sandy, or whether you have used Galaxy, you would have produced multiple consensus files, which are representative of the blueprint of your genome or of your sample. So these are all the bases and all for all the different positions throughout the SARS-CoV-2 genome. But what we're doing now or what we have done, because we will provide you with the samples, if you look, for example, at the course material um, for the MicroReact tutorial, you will see that there's a link to Zenodo at the bottom of this video. So you can click on that link and it will take you to these phylogenetic training files. You can just click on the download button over here and it will download the zip file for you. And then you can unpack or unzip those files. Uh, let me just try and reshare to show you what it looks like. So I've already unzipped my files, but you would probably have a download zip file. Let me see if I still have the zip file for that. No, but you can unzip the files and, and rename the folder or leave it as is. And you will see if you open it up that it will have three files inside of it. For now, you can ignore the last one that's called the tree. That is basically for if you don't want to do the part where um, you do all the pre pre prerequisite converting of your files. You just want to go straight to MicroReact. MicroReact.org is where uh, you will be able to visualize your phylogenetic tree. This tree file is already a phyl phylogeny. So it's a phylogenetic tree. Um, so you can just go straight with this file into MicroReact if you don't want to do the other steps. But we're going to show you how to get to this tree file. And for that, you will need this multifaster file. I'm just going to open it by right clicking on it and opening it up with a notepad because I'm in Windows. Just to kind of show you what this file looks like. So you can see I've kind of scrolled down to the bottom here where you see sample nine, but right at the top, you will see that it contains the reference file. And this is very important. The reference file has to be at the top. So you would use Something, some form of concatenation if you're in Linux to concatenate these files or other tools just to add all the genomes to each other, one below each other. And you can see because this is about 4,000 bases for the SARS-CoV-2 genome that you know the, the next sample starts somewhere at this mark. But all of them are in here. Um, we will have a look at it when, when we process these files a bit more to see how many are in here. But a careful note that these, you can notice that these file names, for example, is sample 17. But now you should know what a FASTA file looks like. You should know that it starts with this more than sign, and then you will get some more data about the name, etc., of the sample that you're working with. But I'm highlighting this because if you look, for example, at the metadata file, you have to make sure that the metadata file that contains all the other information of your sample that it has the same name as the name that you find in the multifaster file. So you can see, for example, 
sample 17, it's written exactly the same, no extra space or anything. It has to be the same. So let me go back to sharing the other screen. Okay, so yes, you you download that file and we're gonna use it in the next step. Then I want you to log on to the usegalaxy.eu. So we get about this, the usegalaxy.eu and log on. If you should have by now have worked through some of the files or some of the tutorials that showed you how to navigate Galaxy. So you should have had an introductory course. If not, please start with that first because we won't be able to go through all of that in this video. But you will log on. And in my case, um, it's not the first time I'm here and it's not the first time that I've done this. So I obviously have something called phylogenetics already. But once you log on, you can either, if you're new, um, rename the history by using this little pencil over here. Um, but if not, you click on create new history if you are not new and you will kind of see a similar screen to somebody who is logging on for the for the first time. Let me just show you what exactly it will look like by going to the home because mine is showing some phylogenetic data. So yours will look like this after you log on or after you clicked on create new history. So I'm not gonna rename this phylogenetics because I already have something with the same name. So I'm just gonna go SARS-CoV-2 phylogenetics. Just name it something intuitive. Enter. And now I have my new history. So now I'm going to, what we're doing in this step to get to the part where we can work in microreact, we we need to take our multifaster file and we need to in some sort of way align the samples in that file against each other and against the reference genome so that the nucleotides or the bases are lined up in such a way that we can see compared to the reference genome where there are differences or mutations in the genome so it will find the best possible alignment one below each other of the samples with respect to the reference genome but we'll, we will have a look at that and that will be called a multiple sequence alignment file. So your multifaster file will be converted to a multi-sequence alignment file using a tool called MEFT. And then from there onwards, we will be able to build a phylogenetic tree. And for that, we will use IQ tree. And once IQ tree is done, we have the file that we need in order to view everything in microreact. So let's start with that. Again, you should be familiar with how to find and run tools. So the tool is called MAFT, M A W F for Ferdinand T. And again, there's a trick to sometimes in the Galaxy interface, there will be multiple options that have a similar name um, or have some form of the name in it. So to make sure that you're actually finding the tool that you want faster, you can go Control F on your keyboard, Control F for find. And you can just either copy this here into here or just type it out and it will highlight the one that you need. So we're going to use the one that's called just math. Here you can already see that this has two tools um, that have math in it. So some things like SAM tools, for example, have so many that you actually want to perhaps use this control if to make sure that you narrow it down. So we're going to click on math. But you will notice that it's not really detecting anything, but the minute you, you may not be able to see what I'm doing now, but you should know this part. So upload data, and then we will go to where you have downloaded, or where you have that multi-sequence alignment file, and we will add it to Galaxy, click start. Uh, and obviously that will now be added over here to your history. So it will go through its usual turning gray first, then orange, and then eventually green. Um, and then you will see the minute it's it's green, you can actually just click on math again, and you will see that it will automatically fill in 
the FASTA file for you because it knows that it's looking for FASTA file. Obviously, you can change it here if it's not choosing the correct FASTA file. But for us, we will just scroll all the way to the bottom. You change nothing, leave everything on default, and click Execute. And again, the nice thing about Galaxy is you don't have to wait for this analysis to finish run, running to start with the next one. So one of the things I want us to just do in this is called the snip distance matrix. So you can just click or add that to the tools. And I can see it over here, but again, just for practice, you can do that again. You can control C for copy and then control F. And you can just paste that in here and you can see that it will highlight it for you. So we can actually start to run this tool before this is done already because it will wait for this to be done. But it will, you can see again, it's already anticipating slip distance matrix uses a multiple alignment file. So it's already anticipating that it's going to be using that. Again, you can lose, use everything um, as default and just click execute. And then at the same time, while that's running, we can go to IQ3. Click on the tool. So here, IQ3 now is not selecting anything because it's taking in multiple different formats. So you will have to select it yourself. So we're going to select the multiple sequence alignment file. And here we are going to change some of the parameters. So all of this here, as you may know, are parameters that can be changed. It's just for the others we didn't need to. But here now we're going to change the bootstrap parameters. So scroll a little down and you will see bootstrap parameters. If you click on this, it will open up. We will choose the ultra fast bootstrap parameters and we will use, you can see they suggest that you start by 1000. So we will start with 1000 bootstraps. And if you can recall, that's just a, another form of the accuracy step where the tree is basically regenerated or built up multiple times until it finds, um, and then it will basically, it will calculate out of the thousand times that it generated that tree, how many times is it producing exactly the same branch at exactly the same place, exactly the same taxa in exactly the same uh, place and it will give a percentage um, or yeah it will give an, an account out of a percentage for you or a ratio once that is done you have to do this part first um, then you go to three parameters and you can scroll down to constructing a consensus tree uh, and you click on compute consensus tree of trees passed I just click on both in case I need it. but And then you scroll to the bottom and again, you click on execute. This is going to create multiple, multiple output files unlike the other one. But just so you know, we, the, the first file and the last file are the ones that we will be using. Yeah, so we will use this, this first one that's called BioNJ. NJ is for neighbor joining. And then we'll just be looking at this um, at this report on the tree. But for now, just just have a look at this uh, multiple sequence alignment. So if you just click on this name and you scroll down, you will see there's something that looks almost like a graph. So we're just going to click on that and then click here in the middle on the multiple sequence alignment. And we will be able to see that it generated, it tried to anticipate how these samples are aligned with respect to one another. There will be gaps, like in this case, you can see at the beginning for all samples, there's your reference genome, and the, these are the different positions. Um, and you will see that there are some gaps, and in some cases, also some ambiguous bases, but for the most part, it will try and align it as best as possible. Okay, so. This you can use for sort of a manual inspection just to see if you agree with the alignment that has been done by the computer. 
But you can also have a look at things like, um, for example, if you know that there's a specific mutation that's always at the specific position. So we know for SARS-CoV-2 at position 241, there's always one specific, in most cases, mutation. So we can go there. I'm looking at these at the top for the position. And again, to scroll down here, you just click and hold and drag this portion across. And you can see at position 241 over here, there's the common C in the reference sample and the rest of the samples, except for this one that's ambiguous, sample 15. You will see that there's a mutation from a C to a T. So yeah, just something that you can look out for. Then snip distance. Let's have a look at that. Actually, just click on the eye. And again, you will see that it tells you how many SNPs there are different in the sample compared to the reference genome. So for example, the one with the highest number of SNPs here, sample four, has 70 positions that are different to the reference genome. And when they say different, they mean only the informative basis. So A, C, T, G, and not the ambiguous N basis. And we can also, so we can kind of use this almost to anticipate more or less how the phylogenetic tree will, will be constructed, which samples will be more or less close to each other and form a clade, for example, and which ones will be different. Uh, we can also see that this one is probably the, the least different. But again, be careful with that because these are informative bases. Um, that are being counted. So if there's a string of ends, those will not be counted. And it may actually be that that sample is way more different um, than just at 37 SNPs, but the ends are not being counted as SNPs. OK, so now this file is the one that you are going to download. So again, you can open it up and then click on the download. I've already, do already done it twice, so I'm not going to do it again. But it will download a file that has a suffix or ends in .nhk. It will start with something with Galaxy and then .nhk. You can rename that file. You can remove the whole part in front that's called Galaxy and just call it 3.nhk. Or maybe let me just show you what I, let me just do it again so that it's, okay, so I click on download and you will see that it's downloading. And then let me just go to my downloads file. So you will see over here that it has that long name. So you can just right click on there and rename it to. I'm going to call mine SARS-CoV-2-3. And you see, I already have it. So let's, let's just rename that. I'm probably going to use this one just for ease of naming. And let's go back to Galaxy. Okay, and then let's let's have a look at this last report that just gives us some some nice interesting details about what happened when the tree was being built. So I'm clicking on the eye again, um, and some interesting things over here tells you that you have 21 sequences. So obviously, if you if this number is incorrect, that can be used as a quality check, and it also tells you how many nucleotides it, it had to work with. But the interesting thing is that 99.6% of the sites were actually exactly the same between the samples. So out of that 29,909 nucleotides, um, only 29,794, or all of those were similar. And it actually only had 61 informative bases, A, B, A, T, Gs, and Cs to work with. And then it also shows you what evolutionary model you're working with. So again, there are other 
tutorials that speak a little more about this or maybe just read up or watch some of the previous tutorials where we discussed this, but it will show you that it shows this evolutionary model to build your phylogenetic tree. And the first result here under your AIC scores also tells you the same thing. So sometimes they don't give you the best fit model up there, but you just have to look at the topmost, um, the topmost line and it will show you which model was chosen. You can also see things if you scroll down, um, like the ratio of substitution for the different nucleotides, like how often are A substituted to C, sort of like a one-to-one, -one, um, and other things like how frequent are certain bases observed in a sequence. Um, so for example, this is about 30% for A's, and you would expect then, because A pairs with T's, that that will also then be around the 30% mark. So that nothing seems to offer about that. Then it will also try to build a phylogenetic tree for you based on the information. So this is just a simple fast um, tree that it tried to build for you, where you can kind of see it's trying to show you that there's about two clades that are forming between this, but this is again, not very accurate. That will be in your bio NJ file. You will see them in a more accurate file. So now we're done with Galaxy. So let's go to MicroReact. So if you haven't already created an account, you can create one. I've already created an account. It will send you a link to your email address. So I've, created one and I'm in my account. So I'm just going to go to upload. And here it shows you that you can drag and drop your files or you can um, you can just click on on this link and go to the files on your local machine. But it does show you what which type of which file types it accepts. So we have an NHK file and we have either CSV or an Excel file. So I'm going to go to my phylogenetic tutorial file that you got from at the bottom of this video. And I'm going to click on my file that's called um, the metadata file. But before that, you've now created your multiple sequence alignment file in Galaxy. So let's start with that file. You can just go to that file which you've renamed as maybe SARS-CoV-2-3.nhx and just drag that file into the space. And you will see that it's already telling you that it's a, a type of a NEWIC file. And then it allows you to add more files. So you can either add more files by clicking on there and go into your metadata file, or again, you can just drag it into there. And it's again, anticipating showing you what your file type is in our case CSV. You continue and it will again anticipate something. It will look at what you're using for your sample ID. And in our case, it's named ID, but it just wants to know, should I use this column called ID for your actual sample names or your taxa? And in our case, it's correct. So you just can click on continue. Um, and yeah. Click on continue again, and you end up here. So what you have here is you have your tree on the right-hand side, which you can see looks more or less similar to what we saw in Galaxy. And here you have where we can see where they've collected, where the samples are from. And then at the bottom here, you see where the samples were collected, so some dates of sample collection. But this tree looks very boring, and it's not very informative. So we're going to play around with the colors a bit. Perhaps one of the first things you might want to do is if you click on here, you can go to nodes and labels and you can click leaf labels. And you will see that it fills out the samples over there. But perhaps you can see this is a bit large. So maybe you want to make that a bit smaller by decreasing the, the name. But you can also see that it tried to lengthen the branch so that so that it could put all the sample names below each other. And that to me takes away some of the information. Like I like having the branch lengths the way that they're supposed to be. So I'm going to 
unclick this align leaf label. And it will look the way it looked before. So now the next thing I want us to look at is this legend column over here. And you can see if it's that it, it labeled it by colors, which, or it's just creating a label automatically by colors. But we want to do some coloring of our own. So we're going to click on this button over here. Let me just show you how that came up. So you click again on this icon over here. And then you click on the metadata blocks. And then scroll down. And let's color this by the next clade classifications. And you can see that it's showing you there's one clade here in yellow and one in blue. We can also go on this labels, colors, and shapes icon on top. You can leave this as is. And then we can color on, I'm going to choose, you can play around whichever way you want, but I'm going to choose gender here. And now you can see it's also starting to populate this part over here. It shows in this region how many males and how many females were, were uh, collected, samples were collected. But these sample names are, you can see it's, although it's, it's made a little a round circle for gender and a square for, or more or an angle for the next clades um, classifications, it's still the same color. So I'm gonna change, try and change the color so that it looks a little more um, informative. And so you can go, if you click back on the eye over here, you can go to this color palette and you can click on custom palette. And you will see here the male and female comes up. I'm going to change female to maybe green. And I'm going to change male to purple. Confirm. Click on the side here. And you can see that now you got different colors for male and female. And it also populates this part at the bottom here where you can see how many males and females were collected on, for example, Thursday the 22nd um, and how many samples were collected for, for next clades to different um, classifications. If you want to go into more detail, you can see uh, that it's also giving you a legend where you can see what represents what. You can also click here and it will highlight the spot for you. For example, if you want to see all your female participants um, for both Omicron 21K and L, it will highlight that. Let's look at only 21K for male and female. If you click here, you will see that it goes away. But you can also do it from this end. So if you want to know where your sample is from, like this one, for example, then you will see it will highlight it over here. It will show that one is male and what the next clade classification was. Then another thing I wanted to show you is, um, I'm going to click here again so that these circles disappear. You can see that there were actually quite a few samples uh, from this region, but it's not really showing on the graph. It looks like it's it's just one sample. So here you can click, and there are two things you can change here. You can change the style of the graph to different things like street view. But I'm going to leave this on light because we just want to be able to see the regions, but you can change these icons to grow with respect to the amount of samples. So if you click on markers here and you click on scale markers, you will see that this actually grows to show you that there are multiple um, 10 samples in this case that gets represented by this. The other thing you can do is change the shape of the tree um, over here. 
to, for example, a round tree or somewhat un unrooted. Um, but obviously, for the purpose of publications, this will probably be the view that you're going with. Again, play around with this. There are many different options and things that you can do. Um, and then, of course, you can click on this and save your file as downloaded as a PNG or a NERIC file, whichever you prefer. Um, and if you open it, it's taking a while. Um, this is PNG, so obviously this is a dark background. So let's save this as, okay, you, your, the, the SVG is probably going to be more or less similar, but you can see that it does create quite a good um, resolution of a tree for you. 